probably heard that the gastrointestinal tract within your abdomen is several feet long. But have you ever wondered how these loops of intestine don't get tangled or bounce out of control when you run, jump or dance? Fortunately, many of your abdominal organs are held in place by a serous membrane called the peritoneum. Serous membranes line several body cavities where they secrete lubricating serous fluid to reduce friction from movement of muscles. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about the peritoneum and its relation to organs in the abdomen and the pelvis. So to begin, I'm just going to give you a quick overview. And we're going to start by distinguishing the two types of peritoneum, which are the visceral peritoneum and the parietal peritoneum, and describe their interactions with organs. And we will discuss the borders and structures of the abdomen and pelvis as they relate to the peritoneum. In the abdomen, we'll look at the peritoneal reflections, the intraperitoneal structures, and the retroperitoneal structures. And in the pelvis, we're going to be looking at the organs, the muscles, the pouches, and some other structures. And finally, we'll discuss the clinical significance of the peritoneum. First though, let's talk about the structure of the peritoneum. The peritoneum is a double layer of simple squamous serous tissue called the mesothelium. And there are two layers of peritoneum, as we mentioned before, and these two layers are known as the parietal peritoneum and the visceral peritoneum. And these two layers of peritoneum are continuous with one another and have a potential space between them filled with serous fluid. And this space allows the layers to effortlessly slide over each other, as you can see in our image. Together, both layers anchor organs and provide support for their movements. So we're going to look at both of these layers and the first of these two layers that we'll look at in a bit more detail is the parietal peritoneum. This is a serous tissue layer adjacent to the abdominal cavity. And in this image, we can see it along the boundaries of the abdomen. The parietal peritoneum is sensitive to pressure and pain felt here is well localized, unlike pain in the second layer of peritoneum, which is of course the visceral peritoneum. This is also a serous tissue layer, but is in direct contact with the abdominal organs. We can see it here around the liver, and we can also see a part of the gastrointestinal tract. The movement of food through the stomach and the intestines causes those organs to stretch, and the visceral peritoneum is sensitive to this stretching. However, painful stretching of visceral peritoneum is not very well localised. So pain signals here that are felt elsewhere in the body are called referred pain. So now that we've gone over the structure of the peritoneum itself, let's go over how it is organized in the abdomen. And peritoneum may or may not completely surround an organ, so let's take a look at what they might look like. Organs that are completely surrounded by peritoneum are called intraperitoneal organs. And most intraperitoneal structures are associated with the gastrointestinal tract, as this organization allows for both support and movement. For example, the transverse colon could look something like this. The lumen that food passes through would be here, and this is the wall of the colon over here. And over here we can see the peritoneum passing completely around the colon. This video is not over yet. Continue watching now the full video at kenhub.com. We have lots more videos like this one available to our premium members on our website. Not to mention all the fun quizzes, related articles and atlas sections. So click on the button in the middle to watch the full length video and master anatomy.